Okay, so let's set up these blinking controllers so that rather than blinking by themselves, they are controlled by the armature. The first thing I'm going to need to do is create a controller. So whilst I'm here, I'm going to try to find a good place to put an arbitrary controller that is simply there to move up and down to control these blinks. And I don't really need to be that specific about it, so I'm just going to hold shift and right click somewhere on the screen between the two eyes, and that should do nicely. Now that I put the 3D cursor there, I'm simply going to press shift A to add another bone, and I think I'll scale it slightly, but I'll scale it on the 3D cursor just so that I don't lose my position. So probably about there will do the job. And I'll call this bone Blink Control. I'll come back into object mode and I need to come up with some kind of controller for this bone because nothing on the tiger is going to really work. So with the controller collection selected, I'm going to create a Bezier curve. I'll go straight into edit mode, select all with A and delete what's already there. And then I'll take the pen and draw a rough arrow, a double headed arrow. So the first thing I'll do is down like that and then I'll put one end that way. I'll just simply duplicate that up actually in edit mode. To make this a bit easier for myself I'm gonna come back into object mode and press the question mark key just to isolate this so that I can focus on it instead of worrying about everything else that's in the background. I'll take this bit first. I think I'll get both of the handles though. So I just pressed L there to get both of the handles and I'll scale it on the x-axis and press 0 just to turn that into a straight line. Now I'll line the bottom of the point up with this one and I'll pl place these two here and I'm doing the same again. I'll press, I'll just turn the 3D cursor back to bounding box. But I'll press scale, Z this time, 0 and that flattens those handles and I think I'll do the same with this as well. I think I've got the wrong one here. So I'm going to press V and vector so that the two handles point to the two different vertex points. And then I'll just roughly try to get these to look the same. It would have been a lot easier if I'd gone along the blue line. So I'm just going to press A and move these along so that they're over the blue line. That way I can look at the squares that are behind to get these exactly the same. And then I might move them up a bit just to get more of an arch on that arrow. I'll press L now so I can get both sides and I'll press Shift D to take this up here. I'll press S and then on the Z axis I'll just type in minus one to flip that round and place this back at the top there. There we are. I've now got a nice arrow. It doesn't have any name so I'm going to call this the blink controls. And that's it. It's in the collection and it's there in the viewport. So I'll press the question mark key again to come out and I'm going to select the, the bone that I want and under custom shape I'll just find the blink control. There we are. And then the usual procedure, minus 90, don't scale it to the bone. And then lastly into edit mode and I already have my 3D cursor in the right position. So I just need to select in object mode the curve that I made before. Which I'm struggling to get a hold of so I'll just use the outliner and set the origin point to the 3D cursor and now that's done. So now this should be a rigged controller. Excellent. So I'm just looking at this and I only really want this to go up and down. I don't want it to go left and right. And I certainly don't want it to go forward and back. There's a few ways that I can handle that. Um, for the sake of this scene, under the end menu, I could just lock the location axis that I don't want moving. So for example, I don't want it to go left and right. So I could lock this. I do want it to go up and down, so I'll leave that one unlocked. I don't want it to go forward and back, so I can lock that. And now when I click on it and press G, I can't do anything but go up and down. So that's one way of doing it. Another way of limiting the movement of this join is to use a constraint. So come down here to the bone constraints properties, and under here we can put down a limit location and what this does is it enables you to put a minimum and a maximum amount of movement on each axis. So if I come over here and just unlock these I know the x-axis and I know the z-axis are supposed to be inactive. So I'll come in here and on the minimum x I'll leave it on zero, minimum z I'll leave it on zero and I'll just do the same for this one too. But what's crucial as you will see it's disappeared. What's crucial is that the owner must be on local space like this. 
because that's what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about local space. The bone has its own space and that doesn't necessarily match the world. But as you can see here now, as we go up and down, we can't go left and right. We can't go forward and back. We can only move around on this axis. And I can go a step further than that as well. If I've decided that this is as high up as I'd like this bone to go, let's say um, I don't want it to go any higher than, than that. Let's say Y 0.1 or just Y0 for that matter. If that's the maximum that I'd like that to go, then I can tick this and say, don't let it go past Y0. And you see here, I can't get my bone to go past Y0 now. And I can say similar when it comes to minimum, I don't want it to go past, let's just say down to the nose. I don't want it to go past that. So that according to this is minus 1.2 rounded up. So I'll type in here for the minimum minus 1.2 enter and now the joint can't go past minus 1.2 and it can't go above zero that's very good if you want to just limit accidentally sending a controller up into the stratosphere or down into the abyss when you're moving around it just keeps it on screen limited now you may have noticed that as I go up even though the arrow stops my cursor continues and look at the Y channel in the location on the end menu it's still going up and it's the same going down as well when the bone reaches the nose, I can still go past minus 1.2 into any number I want. And that's not very good if you've connected a driver to this, which is what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be using this via a driver to control the blinks. So just remember when we're doing this kind of thing to tick effect transform. When you tick effect transform, all of these impact the numbers as well as the controller that you're seeing on screen. So now when I go down, I can't go past the nose. I can't go past minus 1.2. And when I go up, I can't go past zero. So there we go. That's our controller just about set up. I've noticed that when I look at this from the front, the controller disappears. So this is where I need to just adjust the custom shape slightly. So I'll transform it. I think it was the Z axis. Yep just one. I'll just nudge it one forward so that it sits above the grease pencil object that is the tiger's head. 